Well, I think the biggest thing is we finally got uh, a model, 3D model behind you uh, to take a look at the ship design. We're about 98% complete on what we do, at least in what you can see here. And we've got a 3D model uh, over there in the display area also that we'd be del delighted to talk to anybody that comes by the booth. I think we've got several key strengths. You know, one of the first things that uh, we have really focused on is ensuring that the design as we deliver it to the Navy is one that has very high operational availability and that the sustainment of the ship using condition-based maintenance, little artificial intelligence combined with that uh, is optimized for our sailors. So we think we can cut down on the actual maintenance by doing maintenance when you need it. Asa Bo gets up, cost savings uh, come in, uh, just really good all around as a result. I'd, I'd put that very high on the list. A couple other things uh, uh, that we, we could talk about would be uh, safety aspects. You know, one of the things that we spoke to before the interview was the design of the bridge. Extremely open, uh, nothing in the way to impede what you can see. This is very important to me as a surface warfare officer myself, uh, trying to get sailors to see the sea, to look out, keep eyes on the ocean, to watch what's going on. I believe it's a cultural uh, thing that uh, you know becomes a, a key aspect of bridge watch standing which is really driven by the design itself. In fact uh, the model back here has one two sets of launchers uh, we're going to actually put four on there so you get 16 of those over the horizon missiles uh, naval strike missiles uh, you know from the Kongsberg Raytheon team uh, very capable, and of course, I think all the competitors are providing 32 VLS cells. We do the same thing. One of the very interesting things I think about our design goes to the aspect of a hybrid drive in our power plant. And that allows us to shift from both diesels and gas turbine energy and put it all into the electrical grid uh, so we could use that for future weapons capabilities, think directed energy, high power microwave, laser, uh, potentially rail gun down the road. Uh, we, we can make those adjustments immediately today. So we started with uh, generators on the parent design that were about uh, two megawatts apiece. Uh, we've increased that to three megawatts and we could go to even larger diesels if we wanted to, if there was a need by the US Navy uh, without changing any of the structural requirements to the ship. So we have that steady growth of usable power. Uh, we believe right now we, we provide about the same amount of power to that electrical grid uh, as a Flight 3 DDG, which we still don't have in the water yet. Uh, and if we need more, we can take that uh, additional power requirement from the gas turbine. The you know key driver in this competition was uh, you had to provide the hull or the, the hull mechanical electrical piece uh, and it had to be able to facilitate a U.S. prescribed combat systems. There are also a bunch of areas where the United States Navy is very focused on ensuring compliance. So it goes to different signature, uh, you know, radar cross-section, acoustic, uh, things, uh, infrared, uh, heat signatures coming out. There are limitations on those things and that drives you to a certain topside structure and, I, and you have, I, I think, what is an optimized design to meet those requirements and be compliant with not only signatures but some of the damage control requirements, the strengthening of the spaces, bending moment, uh, you know, for the ship as it operates in sea states. Uh, and we've optimized that, uh, building a little bit on top of that uh, from, des from parent design. Marinette's done a phenomenal job over the past 10 years, uh, going uh, you know, from a yard before littoral combat ship Freedom Class, where it really was a dirt shipyard with a lot of stick-built uh, products uh, coming out of there. Uh, we've completely revamped that as we've worked through the littoral combat ship program. We'll go past it to another level as we, we uh, develop the Saudi ships. Uh, and we will be ready to have a truly state-of-the-art shipyard ready to build upon those previous 
uh, capability and upgrades that we've done uh, ready for the frigate here when we need it in, in about a year.